Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invites you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Amen. Today again, I want to give God thanks and praise for His love, His mercy, His compassion. All that He would have done for us today is an excellent day for us when we recognize what God has done and what God continues to do for us. Most of the time we look at the Word of God and the Word of God is really important, interested, um, um, wonderful, everything about it. I want to thank you viewers for being with us continuously so we can be what God requires of us to be at this time and in this season. In the book of Lamentation, we understand that Jeremiah was the one who was responsible for that particular book. And there are some words that are quoted in Lamentation th chapter 3 and from verse 21 and downwards. It said here in verse 21, This I recall to my mind. Notice what it said. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. So he recalled it to his mind that therefore he have hope. How? What are the hope? It is our Lord mercy that we he said that is the lost mercy mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. And notice what verse 23 says. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And Lord. The Lord, is, the Lord is my portion, said my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seek him. And I like verse 25. And the reason why I like verse 25, there is where my team will come from. To the soul that seek him. So my team this morning is to the soul that seek him, the Lord. I'm not talking about a man, I'm talking about Jesus. For the writer to share these words with us is because the writer understand if your mind has not come to a place to remind you that the hope that you have is not in you, not in your wife, not in your children, but is in the Lord. And the only reason why the writer to the lamentation would have said these words is because he recognized as he began to call and pray and seek God, his mind must be always come to a place where his mind recognized without God's hope, we are nothing in this life. I think to the book of Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19, Paul said, if it's in this life, only do we have hope. We are like men's most miserable. So hope is our most important step an encouragement to the cross of Jesus Christ. The writer recognized very clearly the importance of allowing our mind to figure, out, figure it out and to stay focused on God because our mind must grasp the importance of why this hope is given to us. Verse 22 said, It is of the Lord. So our hope does not come from man as I said, but it's come from the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. So the Lord's mercy is a portion and is applied to us so we will not be consumed by the devil. And that's most of the time we need today in this pandemic because you need the Lord's Mercy to make sure you make it through this life. 
I was talking to a good friend of mine. She would have lost her mother. And she said to me, she said, I was just going back to the hospital to hug my mom and to tell her that I love her. But before I get there, she was already passed. That's why it's important. And I know that this lady was doing her best all the time and telling her mom how much, how much she loved her. But on that particular day, she felt as though she can go hug her, kiss her, and say, Mom, I love you. But she did not reach. And even though she did reach, it was late one step. So all of the love that she would have shared with her mother from years to years, she would have recognized she didn't have the opportunity one more time as she think because she meet a little too late she was already dead i want to let us know today it is of the lord mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion never fail verse 22 his compassion never fail. What is compassion? His compassion is his love that he has for us. The Bible says when Mary and Lazarus, um, uh, Mary and Martha brother died, which was Lazarus. And the Bible said when Jesus saw how the people were crying, the Bible said that his reply, Jesus wept and the other words, oh how he had compassion. His only compassion can bring us to the place where God will want us to be. It's of great love that we understand. Great, he said, it is the Lord, the mercies, that we are not consumed because of his compassion that faileth not. His compassion can never fail. His compassion is so important. Why? Because in verse 23, give us the very most important key towards Jesus' compassion. He said, the reason why his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's compassion is new every morning towards us as believers. And great is his faithfulness towards every believer that believeth in him. It is an important drive for us as Christian. Be zealous enough for us as Christian that because of his compassion, we, not, we need not to be afraid. We need not to, to put our trust in men. We need not to get our hang-ups on what is taking place on the whole wide web now with these people who believe they are more brighter and more intelligent than God. People are coming up with all sorts of information as to what's the virus. I remember I was talking to a very good friend of mine, a pastor. He said, virus or no virus, our hope and our trust is in the Lord. I thank him for that word yesterday. You see, we can be encouraged from time to time because great is thy faithfulness O God how many people hearts are fearing them for fear you see the reason why our heart is fearing us for fear is because we don't have that deep relationship with God may I say to you daddy may I say to you mother the relationship you have with God will sustain you even this time of pandem pandemic, I often hear my wife say, No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. And it's a word that the Lord has given to the children of Israel. When the plague was rampant in Egypt, when the, 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 saw, the, the stores of flies by multitude and the, and the water that was turning to blood, hallelujah, the frogs that was in Pharaoh's house, the lice that was turned into the dust, and they were actually being a plague to man, the scab that was, that was burst out into boils and different things, and at the last plague we understood stand very clearly when the animals and the child of Pharaoh and the firstborn of Israel had died and the children of Israel did not die because there shall be no plague coming nigh to our household because where the blood of Jesus is placed over our lentil of our houses and now today it's not the wooden house but our heart and mind and soul may I say to us today it is the blood of Jesus that given us such hope in a time of pandemic, in a time of perplex, in a time of discouragement, 
In a time people are dying left, right, and center. In your homes, only God can keep your home because you trusted him. Amen, somebody. Verse 24 say, The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. That's where my team come from. God is my portion because I hope in him. I was reading the biography of um, this man, George Matthew Matt Mullet, because he's a German. George Mullet, sorry. And the Bible said that he lost his wife. Not only wife, he lost his two wives. So he married two men and two died. He lost his daughter. At age one, he lost his son. And the only one that would have remained is his last son. And he said that, it was said that at 89 years of age, 87 years of age, just before, a few days before, he preached his last sermon. He said, I lost my wife. I lost my son and my daughter. But I'm happy because I have Jesus on the inside. You moms, you may have lost your sons. You may have lost your daughters. You may have lost your unborn child or children. But great is thy faithfulness. You ought to be a happy person. As Job said, came I naked into this world and naked will I return to the Lord. May I say to us today, we came into this world not knowing that God would have chosen us. But you have been chosen. You have been called. You have been given you a responsibility. Serve me. Love me and appreciate me. Too many of us fail from that. Because we tell ourselves, we are better than him. May I warn us today. As one person told me. He said it's all, it, 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 it's rumor. Not only rumor, but it's a reality. One of my good friends said to me, I taught the young lady who died from the airport. And what I see she did, she didn't pass the C exam or common entrance at that time. But she was so persistent in gathering her subjects. She went and did school evening. And she actually ex accelerated the heights that they give her a scholarship. And then she did her best and climbed to the rank in which she will. And he said, it hurt me to know she died at a young age. He said, and for the reason why it's like that, it's because of the fact that it is very important for us to understand. Even with the things of God, we keep our mind, our soul, and our spirit focused on God. The reason for it is because no man knows their time, nor their hour. We live as we feel. We do as we please. We use words as we please. And some of us as fathers in our home, we abuse our wife and our children. We so much abuse ourselves that we don't know where is to stop. We don't know how to stop from abusing those that we love. All because we become too selfish. Lamentation. As the verse has been given to us in verse 24. The Lord is my portion. That's because I have hope in him. Said my soul. For therefore will I hope in him. Verse 25 said. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seek him. So what happened? Verse 25 is saying God is waiting on us as believers. Unto them that wait for him. Just imagine in the Garden of Eden, God went down where Adam and Eve were supposed to be waiting for God. God had to go down there now and wait for them. And when God recognized that they have not been there or they're not showing up, 
he had to call out to Adam, where I go? And Adam said, God, I've reached to a place where I've disappointed you, and I'm hiding. So many of us home, we are hiding from God. We have known the Lord, we have loved the Lord, we have appreciated the Lord, but something happened in our life and caused us to backslide from God. There are many people who are in church, they were backsliding from God, but the only thing that caused them to go further down, this of it because they're not going to church this is not the days where people need to backslide from God and the, and the final word is that I know the Lord I can seek God for myself verse 26 said it is, it is good that a man should both hope and do what shall both hope and qualifyly, it said, quietly, sorry, quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Verse 27 said, It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. So we understand very clearly. As I share with you the heart of God towards us as his people. He said it is good that a man should both hope. Amen. We had to hope. Quietly wait for the Lord. Salvation. Wait for the salvation of the Lord. God's salvation is nearer than we think. What is salvation? Salvation means that he takes you. He savages you out of darkness into light. And for us who knows him, we continue walking in salvation. He savages us out of darkness. We are in his life. And continuously we walk in righteousness, holiness. We walk in, in perfection. God will continue to lead us the way he needs to lead us i tell you today i'm so excited because to live is christ to die is christ to do anything is christ to drive my car is christ the holy spirit to walk is him to talk is him oh if you know anything about my life you would not have want even the clothes i have on I may have looked good on the outside, but I was a man of a bitter heart. I was a man of, of not loving and caring as I am today. So if you see me, what I was on the inside, you would have just wrapped me up like a piece of paper and threw me in the trash. But the man that I am today is something that generates from inside. The nature I have before, I am the man today. It was a nature of selfishness that is ruled by the devil. My life was tied up, wrapped up. I was one to become the next that would have been offered to me to be a rider of the tambourine dance. So when the tambourine beat, when they had it on to me as generation, from generation to generation, I would have been hooked. So when the tambourine beat, no matter where I am, as long as I hear the tambourine, the first place I would have head for is for the graveyard. Because I see my father did it as a young man. Homed, where my dad will ride. Goes to the graveyard, come back with his stuff in the, in the dance because that would have been the, the, similar to the wedding the following day. And when he ride and he ride and he tell him what was going to happen because the devil give you straight information because he is the initiator of it. And by the time my dad get back home, my mother had to light a candle, put it on his chest, and leave it there for the next morning until it burned right down. And then, when you get up in the morning, you'll ask the question, what happened? He don't know. But thank God for the hope that he has given to us. It purified my soul as a young man who knew nothing. As a young man who would have not made the common entrance because I didn't pass it. 
And my father said to me at age 12, now you go learn trade. I did not regret that, giving me that opportunity. As a young man, I've learned nine trade. I can do everything for myself. All I need is the strength to do it. I don't need 10 people. All I need is two people with myself so they can hold while I knock or screw. All because God is the one who gave me the ability to learn trade. I have one of the greatest trade in my, in, my, in, my, in my hands right now, in my heart, in my spirit, to go preach the gospel to every creature, to every man, every woman, wherever you are. That's my greatest ambition and my greatest trade. If you are listening to me, wherever you are, and you have not taken heed for the life that God has given you on the earth, when you reach before him, you will have to give account. Do not let your riches fool you. Do not let your big house fool you. Do not let the car that you are driving fool you. They are all material things. Don't let nothing fool you. Because God is in control. He is in control. May I say to us today, what you have is only temporary. But if you have God and you have that hope within you that he purify your heart, oh yes, it's a life of eternal eternity. And that's what I love about him. That's why I like, there is a song that says, The faithfulness of the Lord. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. They pen these words from Lamentation 3 and verse 20, um, verse 24 and uh, verse 24. He said, yeah, he said, my soul, in, not, in verse 21 said, there I, re I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. He said here, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's compassion are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I want to talk to us as I close. Husbands, I'm not sure where we are. I'm not sure why some of us are so stubborn. We got women, we have wives in our house that are very faithful to us. They cook our three square meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and yet we still have a problem in loving them. We still throw words at them. You're too fat. You start to lose your shape. You start to lose your, your, your good looking. Just imagine before you're married to she, she was a Coca-Cola. After you give she six and seven children, you now recognize she's too fat. You are the, you are the, the culprit. You are the one that, that, is in, that is the one who is really responsible for her. Responsible for her. You are the one. And the reason why you are the one, because you give her children from month, from year after year. You didn't give her a chance to rest so she body could come back normal. You pressure she because you want a football team. And now she's in a situation where she, she body fat. Because of children fat, she's not able to take it off. You now begin to give up problem. Love your wife, no man. Stop your foolishness, no man. Love your wife. Appreciate your wife. The other women that your eyes may be on the outside on, they not care about you, you know, all they want are your money. When they get your money. Listen to me now. Let me say this out. My talk is something properly and straight because you see, it has bothered me. You married the woman. She faithful to you. You're not having enough sex at home, so you want it outside. You go now and you get somebody else and you live with them. After you live with them for 10, 15 years, you know, after you're sick, they tell you, hey, pack your clothes and go back home because they don't want any anymore because you can't serve them anymore. And the wife who you've been suffering for so many years, she the one who will take you back and make sure that you're okay. That don't make sense. We need to love our wives. We need to appreciate our wives because they are more to us than anything else. 
That's why I will always love my wife. You know the reason why I love her so much is because when we sit down and think about the nonsense, when I sit down and think about all she went through for me and for my children and them, when there was nothing in the house because I, go, I went to see to come back and there is no food on the table, she will cook the rice and she will cook banana and she will put it on the table and say, honey, I want me to get me cook. And me can't tell she go find it otherwise because what happened? She prepare what she have. Some of us as men, we always want our women to go prepare things when they don't get. And that can't work. If you bring up the food, if you give your wife the money, some of us husbands, we out of order. Now. You see what I mean? You don't want the wife to spend the money, so therefore here we're going on, you are going to buy groceries, you do everything, and you will not even give her a cent. Who you want she to go and get the money from? She's not going to keep, man. You may have, have your keep woman, but she don't have no keep man. Let me say this to us now. We need to change our attitude. This is not my message. We need to change our attitude, husband, to your what's your wife. Be, pay attention to your wife. If you don't pay attention to her, somebody else will want, and when they become vulnerable, that is where the problem does come. We have too many families are broken up because husband not take care of them. Today, that's not my message, but we need to slip in that. Take care of your wife, husband. Wife, take care of your husband. The Bible says, husband, you love your wife. Go into the book of Philippi, um, Ephesians chapter 6 and read it 25 going down. Read it for me, please. Ephesians chapter, um, um, no, chapter 5, sorry, and verse 26. Read them. Um, read it, sir. So you're not treat your wife in that way. Woman, treat your husband right. Amen. And today again, I want to thank you, wonderful people. You, you, you bless my heart. Every time you listen to the program, you bless my heart. Amen, somebody. I bless you, bless me, because here we're going on. When you continue to encourage me to be on the program, if it wasn't for you, we may not have, I might not have been on the program. So because of you, you are very special to me. Amen. I want to say very much, I thank my wife, Agatha, very much. I love her with all my heart, with all my soul. With all, I just love her because she's my best friend. Husband, you need to make your wife your best friend. Because she's all that we have. Blessings to you today. Remember Bishop as he love you. And shalom. The peace of God be upon you. God, for every husband who are struggling, I pray that you bless them. Remind them that your mercies are new every day. Because of your compassion. May you continue to encourage them and to strengthen them. To be better husband and wife. In Jesus name we pray. Bless the entire Tobago. And the peace of God be with you. Shalom. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network, 